James and Richard Madden to the stage. Your Prince Charming and your Cinderella. Welcome them. Thanks, you guys, for coming and hanging out. Thank you for having us. You know, I had the chance to see this film earlier this week. I went to a press screening. But I also had the chance to see it with a woman who brought her daughter, who every time, Lily, you came on stage, she said, Cinderella, Cinderella. Like, have That's you... Really? Right? No, it is. It is. But it was so sweet and endearing. And have you just been sort of carrying that weight, thinking, girls now look up to me. They think I am Cinderella. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's been really nice at the at the premieres and stuff. Like they they've been so sweet. The saddest one though, this little girl came up. She was like, "It's really sad. Both your parents died." And I was like, "Oh, oh no, it's a fairy tale." <laughs> but yeah, it's really it's really sweet. And they like they want to stroke my skirt. And when we were filming the casting director's little girl, she was four. I was I have this stool that I sat on, and my skirt's like a ten. It was so big, um, and she just sat under my skirt with Smarties stroking my leg. <laughs> That's so sweet. And then for you, Richard, I mean, just being Prince Charming, and if you've already played sort of a king, we know you from Game of Thrones, you've already kind of carried that weight. So were you like, oh, this is an easy transition for me. I've already got this. Uh, no, it wasn't easy. No, I was because I was like, everyone's got an idea of who the prince is. So I just kind of was aware of that and, and not wanting to, to, to do it wrong. Um, but I just wanted to try and kind of make a character from from scratch and forget that he was the prince and just think of him as a, a young guy who lives in a palace. Right, an apprentice in some ways, an apprentice. Now, I mean, this story, Cinderella, I'm familiar with sort of the Disney, the 1950s animated story. I mean, what sort of weight does this story hold to you? I mean, were you someone who grew up with Cinderella in your childhood? Yeah, I, I loved all the fairy tales. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to apologize for the fact that I sound like a man. I'm slightly losing my voice. Um, Mandarella. But, yeah. Um, uh, I loved, um, I, loved I, I, I think Beauty and the Beast was my favorite. I loved the music. I used to love to sing. So that and I loved Little Mermaid and... I think they're great. I think that, you know, especially as the princesses have changed over time, they're kind of the girls that want more and they're free spirits and they want to break the rules. And I think they've become really strong characters over the course of Disney, you know, since Cinderella, where she's slightly more passive in the animation. Um, so we wanted to change that in this. Was it, a, I don't want to say a struggle, but was it different getting into sort of the accent? to be in Cinderella? Because there is like a light change in your voice. Well, it just it sounds like it now because I talk much higher. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> I sound like Prince Charming right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I but There's sort of like a different cadence, really, in, I in your speaking. I did watch it and was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm talking much higher and softer. And I just wanted to try and be as sort of light and graceful and, you know, kind of possess that quality that um, I think princesses have. You know, we're going to watch a clip. We have a clip of when your two characters first meet. And I think we should play it, and then I, and I have some questions for you. So let's watch this clip. A moment from Cinderella out in theaters on Friday. I have Lily James and Richard Madden joining me right here on, on stage. Now, when I saw this clip and I thought, all right, this is a big shift in the movie, right? Now we have our moment when you two meet. But getting to talk to you, what I was really thinking about was, you have to act on horses. Like, how difficult is it to work with animals on a project? Well, we practiced a lot. We practiced a lot. Lily couldn't actually ride at all before we started shooting this. And she's riding bareback with no stirrups or anything. So she really does an incredible job. Uh, thank you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite a lot of work when you have to try and, you know, you're trying to control these beasts and, 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 and do what we need to in the scene. But that was part of what Kenneth Branagh wanted to happen was this kind of metaphor for these two people meeting and trying to control this feeling something else that's going on they're trying to contain while connecting with each other kind of metaphor for their feelings all coming through and, and not really the, the, the unpredictability of it I mean there's undeniable sort of chemistry between you two in the character in the movie how early on do you get to do like a meeting shot for a movie because that, that is a really big sort of shift for the movie do you do it early on? That was our first, first day of filming Really, first yeah. day of filming. Yeah. Ken wanted to sort of capture the energy of two young people meeting for the fir first time on camera. So we'd only met twice, briefly, before we shot that scene. And we didn't have a screen test together or anything. 
You didn't even have a screen test yet. So this is like raw, natural energy that we're seeing. Yeah. yeah. Right there. I mean, I was so excited when I found out that it was Richard. Ken, oh, Ken emailed me and said, you know, we've, we've, we've cast your Prince Charming and it's Richard Madden. And I was thrilled. She thought I was someone else. <laughs> <laughs> But tell me, so what is that day like? Because you would think you'd have to sort of choreograph that scene. So it was already set up. What did sort of Kenneth give you as direction for your... Because it's important. Prince Charming and Cinderella need to basically fall in love in this moment. Well, well, that's what we tried Spoiler to not alert. think about. We tried to not think about them falling in love at that moment, actually, because I think if we thought about that, it would have affected how he played the scene. Um, but luckily, we had so much else going on. Yeah. You know, Cinderella's horse is out of control, and I'm trying to calm that down. So before we've realized that we've settled and are speaking to each other, um, it's happened. So we've not tried to think about it. You know, we're kind of the adrenaline of being on the horses and trying to control them and working out who each other are. That, that kind of gets in the way. So... Before we know it, we're kind of really close to each other talking and it's very intimate all of a sudden. And, and Richard genuinely saved me because, as he said, I'd only just learned to ride. So when my horse was going and he stopped it, he really stopped it. And, and I was like, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm totally in control because everyone's panicking that I'm going to break my leg on the first day. And Richard, like, genuinely saved me. And the terrified camera crew that we're going to take them out with two horses at full speed. We were pretty reckless, to be I fair. I mean, yeah, we should mention for people in case you didn't mo see in that scene. I mean, you are bareback and you're using the horse's mane as your reins. Like, it is full-on wild cantering. Yeah. Full-on. That's so insane. So, like, how close up are the cameras? Like, do you feel that atmosphere when you're on set, like, that they're right up on you for those kind of close-ups? On the, on the close-ups, but on the wides and stuff, it really felt... It did, f it did feel quite raw and it, we, it wasn't particularly structured because we were on horses, so we just had to go with it, really. Um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, and it's not, uh, well, I think we get on really well as actors and, and, and actually when you start doing a scene like that, it kind of everything else you forget about and you are just trying to control the horses and there's a bit of you that's trying to... Did you say horses? The, horses. the horses. <laughs> the horses. Not horses. I'm not seven years old. Um... <laughs> The horses, it's my accent, this is it, I'm in New York, no one understands my accent. Um, and you're trying to hit marks on the ground as well, so you can, there's so much else going on that you kind of just try and focus on each other and forget the rest of it. So that's like day one, and from what I'm reading, the production was like eight months, is that right? Um, it, was, it felt like a long show, it wasn't that long no, for you guys? No, it was like four, 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 months? four and a bit months. Yeah. All right, that's still long. Yeah. I mean, it's longer than from probably, especially for you, Lily, I mean, other than the early scenes, it feels like you're in 80% of every yeah. shot. Like, that's like a heavy schedule to keep. Did it feel that heavy when you were shooting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a lot. And we also had night shoots. So, you know, you shoot from 7 in the evening till 6 in the morning. And we were outside, and it's England, so it's freezing all the time. And we were, you know, so it's, it was a really grueling schedule. Um, yeah. But, and you like sort of felt it. And it was also done sort of in a real castle. So like those scenes that we see of the ballrooms and stuff, was that actually shot in a castle? No, we shot that on the, the, the 007 stage in Pinewoods where they no, shoot James Bond. No, lies. So it looks like a castle. It was so like well done. Amazing sets they built. They built these full ballroom scenes, these, these huge sets, um, which made you feel like you're actually in the palace and they had 2,000 lit candles during the, the ballroom scene and 600 dancers and supporting artists. So you kind of felt like you were in the middle of it. And actually, you know, in relation to talking about the cameras being there, um, you know, sometimes you feel them, but other times when Cinderella appears at the, in the ball at the top of the stairs, um, Ken would let the cameras roll. So she'd come down the stairs, we'd go into the first dance together, we'd talk, we'd go into the next bit of the dance and then we'd leave. It was almost like theater some days. Yeah, those feel like long shots. And you have to hit your mark, right? Especially for choreography with dancing. How, how heavy was that? Where it's like you make one mistake and you have to start from point A again from minute 10 more like or you, whatever. More like you make one mistake and Cinderella's going to be on her back on the <laughs> dance floor. Yeah, not, not quite that early should she be on. Um, was all that sort of choreography planned out well before the shoot? Like how much? No, because you guys had just sort of met. So is how? Well, what are sort of days like when you have to learn choreography? Well, we would rehearse every weekend. Sort of after that initial time, we would rehearsing. And, I, and I'd rehearse during the week while Lily was on set. And Richard was so good because, like he said, I'd never really ridden before. You hadn't really done dancing in that way before, and he really led. And and um, but we'd sort of rehearse for a really long time, and then suddenly they introduced the dress, and it was sort of. <laughs> 
I had a nervous breakdown. I had a nervous breakdown. Describe that dress, please. Describe it. Richard was the one that had to navigate it. There's, there's, there is three of us in this relationship. There's, there's the Prince Cinderella and the dress at all times. She's like my bodyguard. She ensures that he doesn't get very close no to me. Nowhere near. I mean, it looks, at least on film, like there's 800 layers on yeah. that dress. I mean, how heavy was it? Did it feel like the weight of it when you were dancing even? Yeah, it was heavy, but it was Sandy Powell, the designer. She's a genius. I mean, I felt transformed when I put that dress on. So the heaviness and all that kind of disappeared in the fact that I gasped because it was so such a beautiful gown. I mean, it was like, I, th I think there was 400 miles of thread in the dress. Wow. And there was eight, eight layers of like gossamer thin silk and it was all slightly different colors of purple. So the color of the dress isn't CGI'd. It was what Sandy did. She made how the light hit it. It looked, it looked different in different lightings and yeah. I'm gonna assume you weren't actually wearing glass slippers. Can I, can I, can I, yeah, okay. Because what would you sort of see when you were shooting? Because we saw in the trailer, absolutely beautiful, stunning, stunning shoe. But what, what were you wearing like? Reeboks? No, that would be cool. Um, I did wear trainers when I was running sometimes, but I, I had little, like, like pretty, like, silver slippers, but with green spots on them so that they can CGI the... The, the, the sparkle. Because it was Swarovski crystal, so you, you just couldn't. It would have broken, and it was an amazing shoe, wasn't it? I want to, before we sort of get to our Q&A portion, I do want to play one more clip, if we can. Um, when Cinderella first gets her name and we get to see Kate Blanchett as your evil, evil stepmother, uh, let's take a quick look, and I want to talk to you about Kate Blanchett. So good. She gives me shivers. I mean, Kate Blanchett, so amazing in that movie. But I imagine everyone's sort of like palling around at craft services, and then she's got to walk on set and just turn it on. Is that sort of your experience with Kate Blanchett? Yeah, I'm so glad she wasn't method. I, I wouldn't have been able to deal with it. <laughs> Kate Blanchett being mean, no. Um, she was, um, yeah, because she's so cool and kind and just wonderful. And then the scenes, you know, but, but, but you know, she, she, her character was so layered. It was so deep. You could see where the cruelty was coming from. And it almost made it more, more evil and, and very psychological and... I think it adds a depth to the, the fairy tale, which, you know, wouldn't, it doesn't exist before. And it's because she's such an amazing actress. Uh, Richard, you had mentioned the director, Kenneth, earlier. I mean, what sort of tone did he set for the sort of just shooting in general? I mean, it was a really fun set to be on, but also there's something special about Kenneth. This could be Macbeth or Cinderella, and he'd put the same amount of detail and work into it. So you felt that, you know, he would give me and Lily books on a daily or weekly basis of, have a look at this or read this book, things that you wouldn't expect. You know, I'd get Machiavelli's The Prince or something, and he'd say, I think The Prince would be reading that just now. And although you're not going to read that, on screen from performance, it's just an extra bit of something that goes into how much thought he puts into it. So it was a really good working environment. But when you're on set with people like Kate and Derek Jacobi and Stellan Skarsgård, you need to kind of really be on your A game and come prepared. And Ken really encourages that. And that's kind of inspiring to be around. Yeah, and the movie is absolutely beautiful. The cinematography is incredible. Does it seem strange when you sort of have that day-to-day, -day, right? You're on set, you see it as how you see it, and then you actually see the final project. Is it sort of how you imagined, or is it kind of mind-blowing when you see the final project? It's mind-blowing. Yeah, but also um, the sets were all built. Like, it was real. So in a way, I mean, it's even more beautiful and Actually, I don't think it, it... It was real. So the house was built, the ballroom was built, the rooms, the outside, the, my carriage was real, the white horses, the fountain, the stairs. The, you know, so it, it, was, it was like diving into the storybook every day and coming out the other side and just existing in this fairy tale world. It was... It, yeah, it was, it was mind blowing. It was mind blowing. And so now that you sort of have these kind of projects, right? Like, what was either coming across script wise? Like, what was it that made you think, I really want to do Cinderella? What was it in this script that stood out to you that you thought, I'm going after this project? I think it was, well, selfishly uh, for me, the, the prince has only got two or three scenes in the animation. And in this version, you get to see him as a son and as a soldier and as a friend, as well as, as Cinderella's prince. But what, what really attracted me was, the story is much more modern. Now we all know the story of Cinderella, but 
you know, in the original animation, there's that idea of a damsel in distress that needs a man to come and save her from her terrible life. And in this version, it's not. You've got two young people that come together and bring the best out of each other. Cinderella opens the, the prince's eyes to lots of different things. And I think that's a much more relevant story to be telling now that actually it's, it's unity that's stronger. Richard Madden and Lily James are here, and we're going to get to the Q&A portion of our little moderated chat. Uh, Cinderella, the film, is out on Friday, and I believe we're going to kick it to the audience. Hi there. Hi. Um, was there a film you saw growing up that defined what movie magic meant to you? And how did your experience making this movie complement that? I... I um, think, I, I don't know if this is right, but I think the first movie I saw at the cinema was Titanic. Um, even though I, I think I was 11, I think I was way too young to go, but I think my mum snuck me in. Um, and that for me was m movie magic. I mean, unbelievable. And I also love Kate Winslet. So um, yeah, and then doing this film, yeah, this well, this exceeded every expectation for me. Like as a girl to play a princess, to do it with these kind of actors, and 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 I guess like in Titanic, there was so much happening around us on the sets that, you know, that you didn't, you just had to respond, you know, like a sinking ship or a, a pumpkin turning into a garage. <laughs> uh, I don't really know. It's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I loved Jurassic Park growing up. It was always like the best movie to me I suppose I've got an attraction to these films that are like fantastical but could be real <laughs> really well do you know what I mean when you're when you're 12 years old you're like but they could like recreate dinosaurs could this could happen, happen. Um, and I suppose like yeah the, and then this film is is magic come to life as well mm -hmm. um, so oh. if this is for you both if you were to host your own ball um, and be able to invite Whoever you'd wanted, fictional or non-fictional, who would you invite? Oh my gosh, that's a good question. I'd invite you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd invite you. You guys have the dance down too, so you can like. You lead just it. do the dance and repeat. No, I wouldn't do mice. that. I don't ever want to do that dance again. Um, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, if I if I could just have a ball right now, I'd I'd do it with just all my my friends for sure. Um, yeah. And we've kind of got the same friends, so <laughs> the list would be quite short, I think. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, my question is, as, uh, in recent years, Disney launched this new interpretation of fairy tale. Uh, how do you guys think of the, this change? Uh, would it like they define like the girl does not need a princess to save him? And uh, how would you see that as these new trends are movie vehicles? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, especially recently, you know, brave, what a cool princess, a rebellious, brave <laughs> princess. And then Frozen, you know, that's about sisters, sisterhood. And with this, like Richard was saying, it, we didn't want it to be about a prince saving a girl. It was more that these two people meet as equals and there's such strong, beautiful individuals sort of from within that they... They, they connect and they enrich each other just as much as, you know, he does her. Um, so we hope so. How did you feel when um, the evil stepsisters said, um, called you Cinderella? Oh, it was, that was really mean. Um, no, and, and, and but, but, but very hurtful when someone bullies you in that way and gangs up on you and it was three against one and and you know and and sh she's just trying her best and they turn her lovely name Ella into something spiteful and you know what after that scene she then she gets really upset and she that's when she rides off and she meets Prince Charming so you know maybe sometimes when things like that happen it will lead to something wonderful cool <laughs> Well, let's end on the words of wisdom from Lily James. And many thanks to Richard Madden for being here. We really do appreciate it. Guys, go see Cinderella. It is in theaters on Friday. Thank you. Thank you for coming.